Hello and welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about something that I'm asked all the time here on YouTube and that is how do I record my electronic drums? Now I've actually made a video about this with Justin at 65 Drums over on his channel but that was about two to three years ago now. So I wanted to make a more updated version of that video so you guys can see and hopefully I can answer all your questions in this one video. So let's get straight into it. To record your electronic drums you're going to need first and foremost an electronic drum kit. Now it doesn't matter what kit you have, it can be a beginner line of drums, it can be one of the pro end line of drums. Uh, most electronic drum modules on the market, uh, they have a USB input and that is the only input we're going to need to record our drums. Secondly, you're going to need a USB or printer cable as they're commonly referred to. So that's just regular USB to the weird hexagonal thingy side. Um, and that's what we're going to use to plug our module into the computer itself which moves us on swiftly to what you'll need next, which is of course a computer, laptop or computing device. Now you're going to need this to run a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. So that's programs like Logic, Pro Tools, GarageBand, Ableton, etc., just to name a few. Um, and of course that's how we're going to be recording our sound with our drums. Uh, but you're going to need some headphones or earphones, of course that's a given with these. Now this is a more of a want, not a need, but you could use this. Um, I use this all the time, and that is a headphone extension cable. So that's just male to female, TRRS, they're really cheap on Amazon, but basically it just helps you not be stuck to your computer the entire time whilst you're playing and recording your drums. The last thing you want is to be yanked in the opposite direction when you're trying to play. So I'd recommend picking up one of these. And then um, this is optional, but I do have one, and um, you don't need it though, and that is a audio interface. Now I have the Scarlett Solo 2i2 USB audio interface, I think it's called something along those lines. Um, but the thing is, is I only use this to monitor my headphones, so I only plug my headphones into this, um, which sort of renders it pointless, it's basically just a headphone uh, plugging place for me really. Um, so you don't actually need it. Um, you can actually just plug your headphones straight into the internal input on your laptop or your computer itself. Now, what I also use when I record electronic drums is a VST, so that's something like Superior Drummer, Addictive Drummer, Easy Drummer, Steven Slate Drums, to name a few, um, and that's what's gonna give us our sound. Now, if you do not have a VST software, I definitely recommend you pick one up if you're recording drums, or that's for covers, or recording it for actual tracks to send to band members or whatever. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, even the best modules don't have the most authentic sounds, in my opinion. Even the TD30 and the TD50, to me, sound a bit plasticky still. Whereas softwares like Superior Drummer, they sample real, authentic, acoustic drum sounds. And for me, they just sound so much better. So I recommend picking up one of those. Um, and that's what I'll be using today. Um, it's also worth mentioning that we're going to be recording everything in MIDI. So of course we're plugging in a USB cable to our computer from the module and that's because we're not recording audio signals, we're recording MIDI signals to trigger this VST software. Step one, you want to plug your USB lead into your module and your computer. Now your USB port will look something like this one here. It's that weird hexagonal housey looking shape. So you want to go ahead and plug your lead in there and then the other side into your computer which is just a regular USB input. So in order to get a signal coming through on your computer from your module, you're going to need to download your module driver. Now, I know that you need to do this with all Roland modules. I'm not too sure about the other brands such as Yamaha, Alesis, ATV2 box and stuff. Um, but basically, what this driver does is it allows your computer to pick up a signal from the module itself. So in order to get your driver, what you need to do is just go to the manufacturer's website. So let's say you're using a Roland module, you'll go to Roland's website and then type in your module name and driver. So for example, I type in TD30 driver. Um, I download the one that's applicable for me. So for example, if I'm using Mac, I'll download the Mac one. And of course, I'm using Windows, I'll download the Windows one. So yeah, you need to download your driver in order to get a signal from your module itself. So once you have your module driver downloaded and your module plugged in, the last thing and only thing Thing left to do with your module is turn it on and then from this point onwards you don't need to touch it at all it can literally just sit there in the background you, you have nothing to worry about there um, I get a lot of people ask me about module settings and stuff but literally all I do is turn it on plug it in and download the driver and then that is it the module is now out of the question the next step is to open up your DAW so as I said before um, I'm using Logic Pro with my Mac so I'm just gonna open that one up now and then I'm going to make a new project 
Okay, so when you open up Logic, you get this pop-up which asks you uh, what what the first track is that you want to open. So we're going to use a software instrument. So I'm going to press that one, press create. And then from there, I'm going to go to the channel strip. I'm going to reset it, just like that. I'm going to go to the instrument drop down on the same strip. Go down to AU Instruments, Tune Track, Superior Drummer, then Multi Output. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to open up your VST. Um, I'm using Superior Drummer 2, not Superior Drummer 3. However, what we're talking about here is applicable between both the new and the old version. Um, the things are just in different places. For example, I know that to do the mapping on the new version, it's actually in the first tab, which is drums. Whereas here, we've actually got our own mapping section here, but we'll get onto that later. Anyway, so if you go to the mixer inside here, you'll see along the bottom, you've got like kick in, kick out, uh, snare drum, bottom, top, etc. Um, and basically what this software allows you to do is to uh, basically treat your electronic drummers as if they've been mic'd individually, which means that we can actually root each drum individually into our DAW itself, meaning we have more control over each pad, the volume, the sound, the EQ, all that sort of stuff. So that is definitely the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit X on my keyboard. It's going to pop up this channel strip within inside, uh, inside the project. And then um, I'm going to open up Superior Drummer again, and then I'm going to count how many I need to do. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I'm going to need to make 10 channels within uh, Logic itself. So do that now. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name all these down here accordingly to what it says inside Superior Drummer. So the first one is kick in, kick out, and so on. Okay, so now that's all been labelled up, you can see now I've got it all down here, um, running across the bottom. Um, so if I open up Superior Drummer again, oh, you'll be able to see that it all corresponds with the internal mixer inside the VST. Now the next step, in order to get this all to work how it should, is you need to make sure that the sends are correct. So if you look up here, on the kickout panel for example, you'll see it says Superior Drummer 3 to 4 in input. Whereas if you look at the output here, it, kick out is currently at one to two. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that they, that they all match up inside of uh, Logic or your DAW. So now you just click the drop down, go three to four, five to six, seven to eight, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now that's all been done, you can see that they all correspond to their uh, channel strips inside of Logic itself. Um, now if we go to the Construct panel, or the Drums panel, if you're using Superior, Superior Drummer 3, um, when you hit each item, it should show up in its relevant channel inside Logic. So for example, if we hit the snare drum, you can see now, we're getting a signal come through on the SD top, the SD bottom, and the snare drum comp channels, as well as the ambient channel. Because if you're recording a snare drum, these are the mics that will pick up that sound. Same with the uh, hi-hats, for example. As you can see, it's going through on the hats and the ambient channel. So we know now that it's all set up correctly in Logic, and we can move on to the next step. So you might be like hitting your drums and stuff and realizing that the sounds are coming out a bit weird. For example, you might be hitting the kick drum and you're getting a snare sound. Um, that's because what you need to do next is you need to map the MIDI. So MIDI mapping, um, in the old Superior Drummer, there used to be a, uh, a actual tab for mapping itself. However, I think in Superior Drummer 3, you now do it all within the drum uh, tab itself. And then from there, you go into uh, MIDI mapping from there. Um, and then normally in MIDI mapping, you'll have a presets drop down. So on the old one, it will be just above your uh, keyboard down here. But I know that in uh, Superior Drummer 3, it is located uh, in the top left of the MIDI mapping pop down window. Um, so you wanna click presets, and then here you can actually choose what e-drum uh, brand you have. So it says e-drum specific, then you go down for, obviously for me, I'll go to Roland, you have you know a generic one, Alesis, Yamaha, etc. And then essentially what that does is it allows the software to read it as a Roland module, and they've actually made presets to fit alongside the manufacturer so that they work a bit more smoothly um, together. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna click Roland, and then that should pretty much sort out most of my uh, triggering issues. Um, I'm not really going to get too far into you know actual mapping stuff because there's quite a lot of tutorials already out there on how to successfully map your drums inside VST. So I'm going to leave that for those uh, tutorials. But yeah, so once you've got it all mapped out, then you're pretty much ready to go. You've basically got your drums all mapped. You've got it all recording into Logic or whatever DAW you're using um, as separate microphones if you like, which means that you can actually tweak it, 
you can change the levels or everything you can add eq compression onto that channel strip if you did want to and yeah you're pretty much ready locked and loaded to record drums um, now, what I do is when I record my covers, um, I open up uh, the same project every single time because that has all my settings on there. So it has my uh, hi-hat EQ already on the um, channel strip for my hi-hats. It's got the compression already set up. It's got everything there. Um, and that's what I said earlier about it being the quickest way to set up because literally you can re replicate it every single time once you have it all set up. Um, it's literally a case of just plugging uh, the module to the computer and then opening the project and then there you go, you're recording drums the exact same. So I would recommend spending some time tweaking your sound, um, you know, choosing the sounds you want, um, and of course, uh, adding a bit of compression here and there if you need it. Um, and then yeah, from there, you're pretty much set to go. And that's it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's exactly how I record my electronic drums. Now, if you do have a USB audio interface and you're deciding to use that to monitor your headphones, it's literally the exact same process. Just plug your audio interface in, and then in the output settings inside your DAW, just select the interface in the drop down menu for where you want the sound to come out of, so the output. And then that's pretty much it. The exact same rules apply. So, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, please leave a like. And if you do have any more questions that I could potentially help with, then please comment below and I'll try my best to answer it as coherently and easily as possible. So, thanks for watching again and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.